Elevate 4.0. Hello, hello, hello. I see my people coming into the meeting room. Happy, happy to see you. Welcome, welcome to JMMB Elevate 4.0. It's the fourth year that we're doing Elevate. And let me tell you what a four years it has been. Well, the last three, this is going to be another one going to go down in the books. I mean, we started this in 2019 when we did not know what was coming. We had our first one in January, nice face to face in a big room. 2020, same thing, nice face to face in a big room. And then that was January. And then by March, you know what happened. And then in 2021, we went virtual. And then here we are, 2022, still virtual. And you know, that has its pluses and minuses. We know we have some people who want the in-person thing. We miss it too sometimes. But the beauty about having a virtual event is that, yeah, it's safer, but it gives more people access. We're not constrained by the size of a room or if you happen to live and work in Kingston, what happened to the people in Montego Bay. This way, everybody gets to participate. And we're very, very happy that you've chosen to join us this year. We've had thousands of people register for Elevate 4.0, and JMB, we're very happy to have you. I am Carrie Ann Stimson, yeah, here looks a little different, took out the twist out from the introductory video. But I'm Carrie Ann Stimson, and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer of JMMB Group, here in, based here in Jamaica. And thank you so much for joining us. And of course, we, we like to switch it up every year. This year is no different. What we've done is we've kept our ears to the ground. We've listened. We asked for feedback. What do you guys want to hear from us? in Elevate, 20, Elevate 4.0 in 2022. And um, we got the feedback. We heard you loud and clear. Financial education is the thing this year. So we're talking nothing but all things money. So if you got a goal, you want to level up yourself in 2022 and beyond to hit whatever financial goal it is you have for yourself or your loved ones, this is the place. So let I tell you, we still can accept people who want to register. So if you haven't registered yet or you have a friend or family member who is not part of the family and has not become a part of Elevate 4.0, oh, tell them that, yeah, man, come on in. It's not whole day Saturday. It's not whole day Sunday. Check out the agenda tab and you will see everything in terms of where the sessions are. So you can still do life this weekend as well as attend Elevate. And we're going to have an awesome time. So let's jump right into it. Uh, first and foremost, JMMB is happy to be hosting Elevate for our fourth year. And we could not do so without our valued sponsors. And let me tell you, I have my list here because I don't want to forget, forget anybody and get ourselves into any trouble. So we have to big up Express Fitness for being one of our sponsors this year. Thank you very much, Express Fitness. Domino's Pizza. Yes, I actually just bought one today for my daughter, coincidentally. Thank you, Domino's. And then we also are happy to have water and cran water as sponsors this year. Thank you so much, keeping us refreshed and keeping Jamaica always refreshed, as healthy as possible. Oh. And we have Live Simple, wonderful manufacturers of awesome, awesome body products. I know their soaps are wonderful, yes. And then Breche, who doesn't know Breche? A locally made, fine, usually leather, leather bags, and it's still gorgeous mass. It's COVID time. Everybody could use that. And I mean, Breche has been with us before, and we're very happy to have Breche here with us. So thank you so much to our sponsors. Now, guys, we did say prizes and surprises, right? Prizes and surprises, people, so you don't want to miss out on an opportunity to win. And we're not just giving away any and every prize, you know. We're giving away prizes that, yes, are fun and are nice to have, but we're also giving away what we believe are some valuable prizes that, again, we're talking about money. It's how to help you to level up and achieve your goals. So in today's session, well, coming out of today's session, we're going to be giving away Three JMMB gift certificates, a.k.a. money to open accounts with JMMB. What better way to start off the new year than a little cash to start or top up your investments? Now, how you're going to be able to win that is through social media. Of course, we are on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So first and foremost, you need to be following JMMB. If you're not following JMMB already, come out from under the rock. Don't worry, we love you. 
follow us. Twitter, we are JMMB Group JA. On IG, JMMB Group. On Facebook, JMMB Group Jamaica. So make sure you're following us. And on Twitter, here's what you're going to do. All my Twitter people, Twitter is very, very active when it comes to talking about finances and money. So Twitter people, whatever nuggets you're getting out of today's session, I'm going, we're going to be introducing our speakers and moderators shortly. But whatever nuggets you get out of the session here tonight, tweet them, man. Let Jamaica know what you are getting out of JMMB Elevate 4.0. I need to get rid of these braces. That's half my problem. But we need to know what nuggets you're getting out of JMMB Elevate 4.0. Tweet those nuggets. Tweet as many nuggets as you get. Tag JMMB Group JA and use the hashtags, hashtag JMMB. Hashtag JMMB Elevate and hashtag JMMB Gold Getter. Yeah, man, lots of homework. We're not giving you full work for the little money, right? <laughs> but seriously, though, guys, tweet all the nuggets. And whichever person has the tweet that got the most retweets by 10 o'clock tonight, you're going to be one of three winners. We're giving away three prizes of a JMMB gift certificate to start a JMMB account. So that's Twitter. So tweet all the nuggets as you can. Invite your friends and family to retweet. The tweet, the person who has a tweet with the most amount of retweets, you're going to get a, a chance by 10 o'clock tonight, haha, -ha, you're going to get a chance to win a JMMB gift cert. Now, for the Instagram and Facebook people, we haven't forgotten you, but guess what? To know what activities are there for you guys to participate in, then you have to be following us in our timeline. So keep looking at us in social media. Keep hitting that refresh button because our timelines are going to show up with the activities that you need to be doing. And again, you need to be tagging us and using the hashtag. All the instructions are there. So, you see, all my homework is done. So let's roll. We are ready. Now, tonight's session is dedicated especially to our millennials and Gen Z. Now, I am just about a millennial, almost. I think I missed it by two or three years, but it's all good, right? The point is whether you're a millennial or Gen Z, the nuggets we're going to drop here, I think everybody can use, but we're going to, we're going to give some special attention to our millennial and Gen Z audience here this evening. And we have a fantastic panel of people who are going to take us through the motions. So first and foremost, we are going to have a moderator of that session. He is Jermaine McDonald. Jermaine is the founder of Learn, Grow, Invest, a faith-based investment community. I mean, he will t he'll probably tell you more, but I don't want to get myself in trouble. But Jermaine is really just so very passionate about what he does and has been really doing a lot to help to educate the Jamaican investor and, and saver. It's been wonderful. And he's going to be moderating the session. And then we have two panelists who will be joining him. We have Anna Palomino. Anna walked in here looking fabulous this evening. I mean, just gorgeous. And if you follow Anna, she's, I know she's on IG for sure. That's where I see her. She's a wealth coach and author, right? The big bad book of everything, right? Did I get the, uh, the name right? Yeah, I got, um, you know, I, I have to work for the little money and we can't send out my resume after this, you know, trust me. So yes, I got it right. So Anna is a wealth coach and author and she's joining us here this evening. I know we have some fans in the crowd for Anna and for Jermaine, so please give it up and give them your virtual round of applause and then we have another guest who is joining us virtually from the United States and he is Errol Coleman so I'll just tell you I mean Errol was like did you know that I have Jamaican roots I'm like we had no idea so let me tell you how we found Errol right is that we were looking for international speakers for Elevate and I literally just googled who are the top social media influencers who are talking about financial education, and Errol's name came up. So I had no idea it was Jamaican. I mean, he and I have the same hair, hairstyle kind of right now. But other than that, he just really seemed awesome and coming from a place of self-teaching and learning. And we just thought he would have been a great participant in this discussion. And so we reached out to him, and he's like, yeah, sure, only to find out that he has Jamaican parentage, family out in Clarendon. We're all the Clarendonian people. Just big up yourself in the chat. 
So Errol is going to be joining, and he's a trader and TikTok influencer. So if you're one of the TikTok peeps, you want to go over there and find Errol as well, Errol Coleman. And I say, you know, I should have, the name Errol should have really give away the Jamaican roots part. You know what I mean? But guys, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to hand it over <laughs> to Jermaine. Welcome, Jermaine. Thank you so much. It's over to you. You're going to take the reins into the session of how millennials and Gen Zs can level up their wealth and build wealth for themselves and their loved ones. Over to you, Jermaine. Thank you so much, Kerry. It is definitely a pleasure to be here tonight. I'm very excited about this session. And um, yeah, so as, as Kerry said, I'm the founder of the Learn, Grow, Invest community. We focus on financial literacy and education. And today, it is my pleasure to moderate the session with Anna and Errol. So I definitely love to see persons who are very active and engaged in the chat. So I love to see persons saying where they're from. So continue to do that. Just tell us your name, where you're from, and what you're, what you're looking forward to hearing about tonight. I want to shout out our sponsors again, Express Fitness Limited and Domino's Pizza. And we're going to really focus this session on the on exploring the opportunities to build wealth. Now, that's one of the questions that we see a lot. Persons want to know, how can I go about building wealth? It's something that we're all interested in, right? So we want to get to that place of financial freedom. And I can think of no two better persons to speak to us about that topic here tonight. So we're going to talk about those opportunities. And yeah, so we want you to be engaged. As questions come to you, just post them in the chat. We're going to just answer them as we go along. And be sure to look out for those giveaways on social media. I've seen the prizes. They're really good. So you need to just, yeah. OK. So we're going to start with our panelists. We're going to start with Anna. We're just going to jump right in. So how did you learn about money growing up? And how has that affected your pursuit of wealth? Well, the thing is, funnily enough, so let me just tell you. My father, he had a company, he had a business, and he had a mindset where if you want something, you're going to have to do some work to get it. So that Fair part enough. of my mindset, that's where I got it from. But unfortunately, in terms of investing, building wealth, I didn't have that growing up at all. I actually learned about this in my early 20s. Wow. Well, lucky you, I learned in my early 30s. <laughs> so so you're, you're 10 years up on me there. So, so what about you, Errol? Um, you know, how did you learn about money, and how has that affected your pursuit of wealth? No, yeah, I mean, just, I guess, getting into the investment world, uh, my dad pushed me to that side, just kind of introducing me to it. He was never involved in it, but just knew there was an opportunity there to just build wealth for myself and then, you know, maybe future generations down the line. But, you know, not a big background in just investments or things like that at all, but just fell into it and got interested, found a passion for it. So here we are today. It kind of starts that way, right? There's something that triggers that passion for wanting to learn more. That's why everyone is here. We want to learn more about it. So how do you think that millennials and Gen X, how, how do their current financial situation compare to that of their parents? So I'm so happy you said Gen X because <laughs> Carrie was saying Gen Z. I had to research that before I got here. I thought they were the same things, but apparently they're not. No, they're not. Um, but in terms of the different the similarities, let me start there. Yeah. We're focused on building income, yeah. active income. The difference is uh, right, right now we're more focused on early retirement or earlier retirement. Yes. You know, not so much on, oh, let me just get a job, a nine to five, and I'm going to clock in, clock out until I'm 65, and this is where it's going to be. Right now, we are actively looking for ways to retire earlier. Yeah. It's just, we're looking just through active income, which probably is the problem. And I think for us, we're, we're, we're looking for, I mean, no, no offense, but we're looking for a greater quality of life. Mm -hmm. right, right, so, right. yeah. So, Errol, what about you? How, how would your financial situation be different from that maybe of your parents? Yeah, I would agree. Um, I mean, uh, you know, for my dad coming over here to the, to the States from Jamaica uh, at a younger age and just not very well established. So um, his roots compared to my roots growing up, just completely different. And I think one thing that 
a lot of us are really looking to strive for is not only just retiring early, um, but to just be comfortable, to be able to, you know, you know, not have to work for a week because you have to attend this or you get injured or family, family is hurt and you need to support them. Um, and, you know, maybe uh, you want to handle that. So I think that's a, a big difference uh, in terms of that question and where we're going there and with Jen, with my father's generation uh, and my generation and growing wealth. So. And so, I mean, one of the words, I think a very simple way to look at it is we use the word invest, they use the word save. Right. I think that, that is a pain point for me. <laughs> Anytime a client comes to me and tells me, I want to save as much as possible, I go, uh-uh, uh-uh, we don't use that word around here. Yeah. It's a pain point. We'll, we'll, we'll introduce you to inflation and tell you why saving Can we can't talk work. about that? <laughs> <laughs> can we have a whole other session about that? <laughs> Yes, we can, we can. Okay, so, I mean, let's, let's talk about mindset for a little bit. So what would you say is the mindset around building wealth right now? The mindset is I want to build as much active income as possible. And I mentioned this earlier because that also is a pain point for me when it comes to my clients. They're so focused on building in active income they're not so focused on building passive income or investing that active income. It's, let me wake up and I need to make some money now. I need to make some money now. I need to be, okay, yeah. then, then what? Are, what are you going to do? You earn this money, then what are you going to do? Yeah. There's only so much that you can do on your own. So That's at the some thing. point, yeah. And the, the thing about it is that we're tied to time. So you only have 24 hours in a day. What are you going to do? Work 24 hours of the day for the rest of your life? Like, that makes no sense. No, it doesn't. Oh, so, Errol, same question. Mindset. What, 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 what do you think should be that mindset around building wealth? I think that was kind of perfect, investing more rather than saving more. Um, but even before that, I think even just building the correct habits uh, to be able to get to that point, you know, you can't save forever um, and get to where you want to be. You're going to have to compound that money somehow. But I think building the correct habits is a great foundation to get started. Yeah, so, so our, our actions are framed by our mindset. So if we don't change our mindset, it's really going to impact the things that we do. If we believe, a, if, if we believe that saving is the answer, we're going to keep saving. If we believe that investing is the answer, then we'll take the steps to invest. That's why I believe financial education is so important because your mindset will not change if you don't have the information. If you yeah. get the information or you come across the information, you'll at least start to think, okay, maybe these people are onto something. Let me just think about this a little bit more, and that's how the change in mindset happens. Yeah. So you are right. You're extremely correct. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let us define wealth. What is your definition of wealth, Anna? Oh, man. All right, this is my time to shine. So <laughs> it, let me just, first of all, my definition of wealth is an accumulation of assets. Let me okay. start there. But what I want to talk about leading off from that is there is a difference between, and I just want to impress upon this, that there's a difference between wealth, being wealthy, and being rich. I Definitely. want to talk about this Definitely. because this is a Jamaican thing right here. When we talk about somebody being rich, they have money, and they probably pump it into material things. So you have the red bottoms, you have the Louis bag, you have the car, you have the, all the jewelry. But... Are you producing any income from all of these things? That's the difference between being rich and being wealthy. When it comes to being wealthy, you have accumulated assets that produce income over time. So no longer you have to exchange time for money. So you no longer have to exchange time for money, which is why what we want to strive for is being wealthy. We want to be wealthy. You know, I even have to adjust my posture. <laughs> you, you want to be wealthy. Okay. All right. <laughs> I saw All right. you. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> All right, same, same thoughts, Errol. Um, Errol. What, what, for you, is that definition of building wealth? Yeah, I would say the definition of, of, of wealth for me would just be not having to, you know, do act, active income all the time. I know you guys keep bringing it up and then passive income, but being, being able to, you know, miss, again, miss a week of work. You know, you get injured, you have bills coming in. Stuff happens, accident happens, life happens, um, but to not be able to, uh, you know, get too behind and still not be paycheck to paycheck, but be comfortable um, just in case anything happens. And I think that's kind of the true definition of wealth in my eyes. 
Yeah, yeah. I, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, so we have to put the things in place to, you know, protect our source of income. We need income to survive on this earth. It's, it, there, there's no other way around it. Can I just say, sorry, oh my God. because so, so, you just said something that I think I have it in my book. Um, there is something that we need to understand. Money is not evil. <laughs> Talking about money is not us participating in something evil. Yeah. I, I want us to just, uh, to just you know, appreciate that. It, there shouldn't be this, this day in our own talking about money or talking about wanting to earn more money and to get more money. We need yeah. to get rid of that stain. So, so that's why it starts with mindset, though. Mindset. Mindset yeah. is so big. Yeah. You were right. Yeah. All right. So what is the most valuable skill you would say that you need to have in order to build wealth? In terms of the most valuable skill, I would probably say you need to learn how to read. <laughs> Not just, you know, look at paper and be like, I'm going to read these words here, but read and comprehend. You know why I say that, Jermaine? Almost, I'm going to say maybe 70% of what I know with respect to finance, I read. Yeah. I didn't go to school for this. I didn't sit down in front of some lecturer and, you know, just have them feed me information. I read. Where did I read? Books, the internet. But you have to learn how to read and comprehend. So once you can do that, I just want you guys to understand, you know, once you can read and comprehend, you can get wealthy too. It's, that's, there's no gimmicks to this. Yeah. The answers to everything that we're looking for are in books that people are not reading. Which is so unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. So Errol, same question. What is the most valuable skill in terms of building wealth? I think I would, I would have to go back to the good habits thing. I mean, even for me personally, I wasn't someone that enjoyed reading books, but I cracked open a book a couple years ago, and now I like to read a book here and there now, and I like to even build a habit to even read at least you know 15 minutes, whatever it is, a day, and just building that habit. So I think it would go back to habits, um, and I just had to touch back on the point about reading because I've gained so much knowledge uh, in, just, in just those books that people throw around and just run off the top of my head. Off the top of my head is called Atomic Habits by James Clear. It's really popular, but one of my favorite books out there. But um, building good habits, learning how to do that, that's my answer again. I have to go back to it. Yep, definitely. So I was actually going to recommend that one, Errol, so I'm glad that you did. Check that book out. It's, it's a great read. And... What I've found, and I mean, half the time, or more than half the time, I spend managing my investments is about reading. I'm reading financial statements. I'm reading about companies. I'm reading about different investment options. It's a lot of reading. So if you don't, if you don't build up a love for reading, it's going to get boring. You know how we can fix that? By connecting reading with wealth. The more you read, the more money you get. So go read. That's 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 what we need. That's how we need to think of it. It's. The more you read, the more money you get. Everybody wants to get some money to go buy some, some things, hopefully income-producing assets. Yep. So let's just create that connection right there. I feel like because you've mentioned that, I need to ask what are the differences? So, so income-producing assets, what are some of those? Real estate. That's my, that's my go-to, real estate. Stocks. Uh, we have, um, well... But you know, a motor vehicle can be an income producing asset, you know, but that's a, that's a kind it of depends on how you use it. It depends on how you use it. Okay, okay. All right, Errol, same question. What, what are income producing assets? Um, again, yeah, I would say real estate, that's probably one of the most popular ones. Um, I know for, I, I guess, younger people right now, and, and just someone that doesn't have a lot of capital, that one's a little tough. Uh, just with markets in general, and just I know you, I heard you guys uh, mention inflation for a second, but just the housing market just inflating. Um, so real estate, I know there's new opportunities with crypto. Very new. You really want to be careful when you're diving into this type of space. Do your due diligence. Do your research. Um, but opportunities uh, within there, I'm not um, gonna tell you where to find stuff like that, but. Uh, the blockchain, which what has to do with crypto, that's the most recent type of passive income. Uh, I see people getting into other than real estate. And other than that, um, um, nothing off the top of my head or that I personally get into. Okay. So 
I, I know real estate could be a little bit out of the reach of some persons, so I like to say start with the stock market because a lot of opportunities can open up starting there, right? So don't, don't miss that chance. It's really easy to open an investment account. Once you have that account, then you have opportunities to access you know, billion dollar companies make money as they make money. So I would start there. I mean, that's, if that's, I could, uh, but in just for a quick second, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I blanked for a second. But another thing would be things like dividends as well. Uh, I know that has to do with the stock market again, uh, like you mentioned. And then one of my other favorites that I like to recommend is index funds, where a, an approach like that is a little more, you know, conservative in the market. Um, and you know, not very aggressive. It takes a little more time, but it's investing. Your money's compounding, uh, and it's not just sitting in a savings account. So, yeah, yeah. So what what I like to do when we use terms like conservative, I like to explain it for those who may not understand. So Anna, what what is conservative? What is aggressive? Okay, cons I'm gonna just put, make it as simple as possible. Hmm. Conservative are for are people who are afraid of risk. So people who don't want to take a risk, they want to reduce the amount of risk as much as possible, you would say that they're conservative and their approach, their investment approach would be conservative. As it relates to aggressive, these are people who, listen, just me want everything. Me want everything, go on to. Men of business bono risk, just yes, I'm willing to risk what it all. Risk? What is risk? I'm willing to risk it all. <laughs> so when you mention risk in this context, it's, it's all right, I'm going to put up $100,000. You say to me, Anna, this is an aggressive investment. What it would mean is I may lose all of that. Yeah. So I have to be okay with that. As it relates to conservative, I, my $100,000? Are you? No, I want, my, I want to see my $100,000 right there. Yep, that, that's perfect. That's it. That's it. So what, what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see that millennials are making in trying to build wealth? Following trends. <laughs> Following trends. I see that. You see, I have a thing called, I have a program called the Money Society. You see? Almost every time somebody new joins a program, they tell me, oh, I see this thing on TikTok, and I, and I want to do it. Or when you look at their portfolio, they have some things in there. They may have some stocks in their portfolio. I ask them, okay, this is nice. Tell me. Why did you purchase this stock? So well, I saw it on Instagram. <laughs> I saw it on Instagram or some girls that I must buy it or some guys that I must buy it. We need to invest more in financial literacy and financial education. The biggest mistake you're making is not doing that because if you don't have that, you have no choice but to listen to other people. You have to, you have to rely on other people to guide you and to lead you, which yes. may not always be good. Yes, exactly. Errol, what are some of the biggest mistakes you see that millennials are making in trying to build wealth? Uh, I would say spending more uh, than they're making and then, you know, saving too. I, I was going to, for a moment here, I was going to say, you know, saving more than they're investing, but I guess it could be relative. But, you know, in your savings account, have enough to where you're okay, you know, a, a little bit of money for emergencies. Um, but I wouldn't leave too much in there for inflation and, you know, conserve how much you're spending again. Don't be too aggressive on your spending like we just mentioned. Um, but it, it, I think it has to be taking on debt that you can't afford and spending more than you make for me. Yeah, so, I mean, I would say that the biggest mistake I see are persons wanting to take shortcuts. So they don't mm -hmm. really want to put in the work. They want to get rich in a month in two months, in three months, <laughs> when they don't realize that real wealth takes time. Precisely. So, yeah. I, can, I can totally agree with that. I mean, I see it all the time. I see it all the time. And I say with the straightest face possible, I say to them, you are, you are in the wrong place. You are talking to the wrong person. I cannot help you at all. The, the way how you earn this in a month is the same way you can lose this in a month. That's how yeah. I look mm -hmm. at it. Yeah, you, you can do it. Don't be lazy. And I, I think that's kind of where, um, you know, people like to take stock picks and follow people online. Oh, I bought this because they said buy it. You know, you don't have to go learn and do your own research. It's a little easier, uh, but you can do it. Just take the initiative uh, and learn for yourself. The information is out there. Yeah, agreed. All right. So, so let's take it to where we can now understand what are some of 
the opportunities locally where young young persons can find to build wealth. I know. Let's start with the stock market. You mentioned it earlier. It's it's probably one of the easiest uh, <clears throat> uh, ways to start. The stock market. It takes next to nothing to open a, a, yeah. an investment account, meaning just like you open a bank account, the same documents that you would need are the same documents that would be required yeah. um, for you to open an investment account. For GMMB, for example, they have the EMA account, which would be a brokerage account. That's just $10,000 that would be required to open that account. Once you do that, it's t once you open your account with the $10,000, you don't need to keep putting $10,000 yeah. in. Even if you have $1,000, you can use that to purchase stocks. And guess what? That can produce income. I was watching, um, there's an IPO that opened the other day. Uh, I see you smiling. <laughs> I see you smiling. You know, where, you know where I'm going with it. I just want to show you guys. Yeah. I just want to show you guys something, right? Uh, an IPO opened the other day. Uh, yeah. It opened at a dollar per stock. Mm. The last I checked it, which was yesterday, it was at maybe $2.54. $2 well, it went down a little bit. So it, went, it, it ended at like $2.03. Ooh, $2.03. The point I'm getting at, that's only over 200%. Sorry? I said on, only 100% from the IPO price. 100% from the IPO price. So you have that in your savings account. You tell me, when do you think you're going to get those kind of returns? Yeah. It's that simple. You purchased into the IPO. When it closed, it, it got listed. It's going to get listed, and then you make some money. Yeah, so, 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 so far that's what we are saying before. The investment of time you would need to make there is reading the prospectus, understanding the opportunity, speaking to a licensed financial advisor, and making a decision. Right. I mean, that would have taken you a couple of hours. That would have taken you a couple of hours. So you start there. And something that I want to just, a, a tip I want to share with you guys is um, instead of investing like it's an event, so you know, you get some money from your grandmother because it's your birthday, or you get some money from, I don't know, your, your spouse and because um, it's your birthday. Instead of you taking the money to go buy shoes, um, invest the money. Another thing is don't invest like it's an event, as I said. Invest every single month. Make it a habit, as Errol said. It needs to be a habit. So you do it every month. No matter what is happening, you invest every month. That's how you see growth in your account. That's how you see growth in your portfolio, yeah. right? Are there any other opportunities that you can think of apart from the stock market? Real estate. <laughs> Real estate. But let me share a little tip with okay. you. Because I take Errol's point that it can be a little bit um, difficult to get into yeah. that. But you see, the thing is, I, how I approach real estate, I don't approach it from the traditional sense. I have a whole chapter about this in my book because my views on this, they're very interesting. Um, but I have a whole chapter on this because how I look at it, instead of purchasing a $30 million uh, property, a $30 million one-bedroom apartment using a mortgage, maybe you could focus on buying a piece of land for maybe okay. $2 million. Okay. So you see how we move from a $30 million target yeah. all the way down to a $2 million target. We're purchasing a piece of land, and then you're going to say to me, OK, Anna, I bought the land. Now what? No, you keep investing so that you can get some money to go dig the foundation. Yeah. You dig the foundation, you get some more money, you buy some block, $100, $100, $100 block, $100. So you buy some blocks, you buy some cement, you buy some steel, you just do it slowly. Yeah. You, you, do, you work on one room or maybe two rooms at a time, you rent out that. You stop and you rent out that. You rent it out, get some money in, and then you go again. You do another yeah. two, and you go again. It's a process, right? So it's, it's, not, a process. it's not the same day. It's going to take you some time, right. but you're, you're building towards something. Precisely. Okay. All right, Errol, what are some of the investment opportunities that you see in the international market that we can take advantage of? Yeah, again, I, I, uh, I would have to say stocks and real estate right off the bat. Um, I would have to say, again, uh, things like the blockchain that have to do with cryptocurrency. I think, in my opinion, that's just something that's going to get more popular. And I think just doing your research just to stay educated on it, um, those are opportunities there. Um, what else opportunities? I know, have you guys, I just have to ask real quick, have you guys heard the whole craze about NFTs? I don't want to get into NFTs, but is that popular in Jamaica as well? 
Yeah, in, in, in some circles, yeah. I, I find that a lot of persons don't really understand what it is. So yeah. it, it's no. a very challenging thing to talk about. Um, not many people really... I mean, crypto in itself is hard for people to understand. Right. Then when you mm -hmm. add NFTs to it, it's just... Yeah. You, know what I, you know what I did? Errol, you're going to love this. You know what I did? Yeah. I went on TikTok. I went on TikTok oh. and, I, and I, <laughs> I searched... Okay, NFTs... Because I saw Paris Hilton talking about it. And I'm like... Paris Hilton, all right, yeah, yeah. TikTok. Yeah, I got to know about this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have to know about this. So, um, yeah, you can look into that. That's another thing I think is going to become really mainstream, um, I think. I hope me saying this won't, you know, accelerate this, this, this process because we still need to get in right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I think NFTs right now are where Bitcoin was a few years ago when Bitcoin was so, so, so cheap and nobody was uh, paying attention to it. You remember that time? Yeah, Nobody so was long ago. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's where NFTs are now, which is why I feel like we should retract what I just said so that we can all go, you know, I don't want it to become mainstream just yet. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so I see what you're saying. So dirt cheap. <laughs> no, yeah. Okay. No, yeah. go so, ahead, go ahead. So, so, so the most, the thing that I want you to take away from this, if you're watching, is that there's there, your opportunities there. Right? A lot of things are still unknown to the average person. And for those of us in it every day, we're saying that there's still time. It means that there's time. You just have to invest, have the right mindset, learn to read, as Anna would say, <laughs> and then it, 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 will, it will just make sense as you go. Don't try to understand everything all at once. Give it some time. Exactly. Right? Uh, just follow, and just to, to add to that, follow Errol's tip in terms of building habits. It will happen over time, but it won't happen over time if you don't have good habits. You uh, have to make yeah. sure you cultivate good habits yeah. so that right. your portfolio can grow right. quicker, actually. <laughs> yeah. So I think we have a poll question. Do we have that ready? All right. So we have a question for those in the meeting right now. Just go ahead and answer. Let's see if you've been paying attention. <laughs> okay. All right. So while you're, while you're doing that, what, what I wanted to do is kind of, you know, just... So we, we, we spoke about um, stocks. We spoke about real estate. We spoke about cryptocurrencies. I also wanted to just talk about... Um, so there's sometimes this mindset that I need a lot of money to start. So can we talk about that for a little bit, just how easy it is for persons to get started? Sure. Can I just backtrack? Let me just go back a little bit yeah. before we get there, because a problem that I find a lot um, with respect to my new clients... <coughs> wow, I don't know what's happening with my throat. <coughs> right, so a problem that I see a lot with my new clients, they sit in front of me, they tell me, I don't have any money to invest at all. I go through their spending for the month. I go through, through their budget. And I'm just like, all right, take out this, take out that, take out this, take out that. We've found $10,000 now. Then they probably said to me, $10,000, what am I going to do with that? I just, I just mentioned earlier, yeah. all it takes is $10,000 to open an MR account, um, equity money market account or equity money market fund. All it takes is $10,000 to open that. So you open that. Then, you know what, next month, if you we go back through your budget, you realize that you can't do the ten thousand dollars. Just one thousand dollars. Just yeah. one. It it's cheaper than the KFC price them we're right now. The, the meal a meal deal? Meal deal cheaper than meal no deal comment. right now. No comment from me. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, so it, it can be it, it can be totally it's totally possible. Yeah. So I want I want persons to just get it in their minds, right? So we spoke about mindset, really can't stress it enough. It is easy to get started once you have the right source for information. So, so avenues like JMB Elevate, so you, you need to be locked in this entire weekend. You need to be paying attention. You need to be making notes. And you know, put the information that you're learning into practice, and it will become easier over time. So Errol, I know that you're into stocks and options. You know, can you talk a little bit about how what your process was to get started, you know, because I know that you, yeah. you learned on your own. So show persons what it would look like to get to the point that you're at right now. 
No, yeah, definitely. So I originally found out just about the market and how to get involved with it when I was 18, just heading into my freshman year of college. Uh, super busy. I was playing soccer at the same time, so I didn't have a lot of time to, you know, uh, learn about the market. I would spend weekends uh, searching basic stuff like what is a market cap? And the market cap is pretty much just the, the overall, you know, the value of the company. So like little stuff like that, just the very basic terms. And that's what I would do. Not very active yet until my second year of college. Um, didn't really know what I was doing. Um, learning from trial and error, like paper cut, like, sorry, my audio. There you go. Sorry, so something popped up on my screen. That polls thing, I think. Yeah, just minimize it. There we go. Cool. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, so uh, that's how I got started. Uh, learning from trial and error, I was just amazed that the market was a thing. I didn't know it was out here. I was kind of wondering why my other peers weren't talking about it. So um, I pretty much was just on YouTube, Google, reading articles, uh, watching so many videos that probably were a waste of time. But at the time, you don't really know what's right and you don't know what's wrong and you don't know what's worth your time. You don't um, and know what's worth your time. So that's how I got into it. That's when I really started to grow a passion for it. So uh, after a while, I was like, you know, I really want to share my experience. I don't really want to teach, but I want to share my experience and the things that I'm learning as I go through my journey. So I decided to hop on TikTok. I originally wanted to hop onto YouTube earlier. I made some videos. They seemed really awkward to me. So I had to put the camera back down. I realized this was going to be a little harder than I expected. So TikTok came around and I thought that was a great opportunity to you know, start uploading videos about the stock market and stocks and stuff like the float of a stock, just little terms again. Um, so I did that and um, grew a little community from TikTok. Um, and that's how I just really got immersed in the, into the community. And then after a year being on TikTok, that's when I got started into options. I was actually only pretty much trading equities, so just shares. And I know um, some people that aren't in the market might not know what that is, but sh options is different from trading regular shares. If I buy Apple stock right now and Apple stock is sitting at $50, if I wanna buy one share of Apple, it's gonna cost me $50. It's a little bit different with options. So that's as far as um, I'm gonna get into that. But I got into options a year later with Tasty Trade. Uh, I was on their series, The Two Utes with Tom Sosnoff, he was a CEO and I was brand new to options, never traded it before, but have traded shares or stocks in the market before. So um, just threw us in the deep end there. Uh, was teaching us the ropes, uh, you know, uh, learning from trial and error, learning why options can be beneficial, uh, and then just have been sticking with it ever since. So that's how I got into options. Started off with regular shares, regular trading in the market and investing. Just blew my mind that kids had access to this on our phone and then YouTube as well. Um, so that's how I got intrigued with it. That's how I got started in the market. And then I guess that's why we're sitting here right now speaking. So it's been a journey. Yeah, so my, so my journey is actually similar. So I, I started investing five years ago, realized I didn't know anything about it. So we formed a group of persons who could just talk about investing. Mm -hmm. And then we just you know, kept on growing that group, growing that group until you know, Learn, Grow, Invest is what it is today. So. You know, just to just to encourage persons that it's easy to get started. Mm -hmm. It's really about your willingness to learn the information, your willingness to take some time. Errol said, "What a, a little bit over a year, he was able to learn the the basics of one thing and then move on to something new." You know, can I just share a little bit of a hack or a little a bit of a strategy? Mm -hmm. If purchasing stocks if, individually and on your own, if that seems a little daunting to you. Maybe you could look into unit trust products. Unit trust products, I, I can explain what they are, but an example would be um, inco the income and growth fund that GMV has. Yeah. That's $6,000 to start. How it works, well, not just the income and growth, but unit trust products mm -hmm. overall. How they work, I like to think of them as investments with training wheels. So you put some money in every month and this big building of all these professionals like around computers being all their analysts and all of that, they are there just processing all the numbers and reading all the things that you should be reading. They make the decisions as it relates to which companies 
would be good companies yeah. to buy into, which companies you should hop out of, that kind of a thing. And they do that on your behalf. But the only thing is that instead of them doing it for you and you alone, it's in a, you're in a pool. Yeah. Yeah. So it's as if Learn Growing Best decided that you know they're gonna take, they're gonna pool their funds every month to invest in this particular uh, asset or investment. Um, how it would work is that when that asset or investment starts producing returns, the returns are returned to the pot. Yeah. And that is used to then go out and in, they use that to go and invest some more and some more and some more. So it's, it can be very easy, you know. Yeah. And, and another point I'll add to what Anna is saying, it's, it's important to stay invested and to keep investing. Right, so right. So some persons will invest one off. I bought this mm -hmm. one stock one time. I bought this one IPO one time, and then they'll never invest again. They invest like And then they invest. wonder why they're not building wealth. Right. It's about consistently investing. It's about, you know, as you said, allocating something each month. Mm -hmm. So imagine if five years straight you do $10,000 per month. Oh, that's $600,000. Listen, listen. Listen, listen, listen. That's 600,000. That can be, that, you have no idea how much that can be. That can be some money yeah, that, no, yeah. not money. Plus, some sh money, sh money that you're looking at. Yeah. Plus the interest, listen, you need to go in, you need to go start investing like right now. Yeah, well, right after Elevate. Sorry, yeah. right, right, right <laughs> after. <laughs> All right, so let's, let, let's take it a little bit, you know, deeper now, more practical. Uh, what are some really good sources that persons can look to to learn about building wealth. This is going to sound really bad because I'm a wealth coach and all, and I'm, it's supposed to be official, but hear what? I'm going to just keep it real with you guys. The, one of the best places to go, <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> TikTok, Instagram. I'm not exaggerating. There is so much information on TikTok, and you can find the information being produced in so many different m manners. Like, you find somebody doing it like a music video, you find somebody explaining it like it's school, you find another person explaining it like, oh, let's just talk. There's so much information there. Then, as it relates to Instagram, I realized that these companies, they break their news on social media first. Yeah. Nowadays. Yeah. So why are you not following these companies on Instagram? That's where you can get so much information. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there is financial greed on all these you know, all these things. You should go read it, sure, read it. Or, or just go on TikTok or Instagram. Okay. Any, <laughs> any good books that you could think of? The Big Bad Book of Everything by Anna Palomino. <laughs> <laughs> any other books that you can think of? Aside from The Big Bad Book of Everything by Anna Palomino. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can start with, so you have Rich Dad, Poor Dad. One of the, one of the biggest compliments I've ever received uh, sometimes people read my book and they say, you know what this reminds me of Rich Dad Poor Dad? I remember the first time I got that compliment, mm -hmm. Jermaine, me, nice. boom flick, me, boom flick, 500 million times, because I'm like, what? So you can look into that book, Rich Dad Poor Dad, The Broke Millennial is another one. Um, there's so many, let me tell you guys what to do. You're going to go on Google, right? You're going to type in personal finance books. On Google, they're all going to come up as like running across, as really, you know how Google is, a top search yeah. right here? The covers of the books and everything, they're going to be right there. So just, just do that. Start from the first yeah. and go all the way down. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Sure. Errol, what are some good sources, you know, for persons to learn about building wealth? Uh, I would say The Compound Effect is a really good book. Very similar to Atomic Habits. Atomic Habits is still going to take the throne. That one's still my favorite. Um, another one, I would say... Um, yeah, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, another really good one. I'd have to say my favorite's Atomic Habits, and uh, I couldn't name off uh, an investing, but The Intelligent Investor, again, if, if you really, if you want to take that route, a little more niche specific, but those are some of my favorite ones there. Awesome, awesome. Thanks, Errol. Can I just give a, a tip quickly? Sure. Building on Errol's point, Intelligent Investor, me, not to tell no lie, I've, I've, I've read that book like, sorry, I've attempted to read that book. <laughs> five times. <laughs> it is so boring. <laughs> it is boring, but I found a hack, and that's how I got through it eventually. Go on YouTube, you see? Type in Intelligent Investor. There's some girl on there explaining what 
every chapter is talking about. And I was like, really? That's what, that's what they're talking about? And then when I went back and I read it, it's like, yeah. oh, I so, get it. So the language in, in it is a little bit hard for beginners to understand. Mm -hmm. So that's actually a hack that I use as well. If it's, if it's something that I don't understand, I'll watch a video explaining it, right. and then I'll go back to read it, and it will and it typically clicks. make more sense right. after that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, so uh, let us talk about the difference. So we spoke about it a little bit earlier, and I was waiting to kind of dig deeper into it. Now, mm -hmm. what are some of the differences? Well, well, first, let's define what is active income versus passive, and what are the differences between the two. Okay, so, and I'm going to explain it. I'm going to break it down, right? So active income is income that you have to trade your time um, in exchange for money. So that is active. You have to actively do something to earn this money. When you wake up with your 5 o'clock alarm, you go shower, jump in your car, go to work, and you have to stay there from 9 to 5 for the lucky ones because your contract says 9 to 5, but you there till 2 o'clock in the Not morning. Really nice that, was, that was my life before. That is active income. Passive, oh, by the way, let me just say, if you stop showing up, you, you stop, being paid. stop being paid. So that um, would basically classify it as active. As it relates to passive income, you don't have to do anything. The money just keeps coming in. It's so funny because on my Instagram, every day I wake up, I, on my, I, the, I, know, I know the money coach family, I on them case every day like white on rice. And I said to them, guys, you need to be looking into passive income. So I actually took a picture of or a video of a check I got from Amazon. And I said to them, I've been here in Jamaica, and I have not been doing anything as it relates to this, and I have a check. It's so funny that I posted that video maybe on Monday. Mm -hmm. On Wednesday, I kid you not, what happened was I was in my pajamas. My security guard came, knocked on my door, brought in my mail. I was going through my mail, and there was another check. Why are you not looking into this? This is the best life. Like, yeah. collecting checks in your pajamas. Yeah. That's passive income. That's where we want to go, guys. That's where we want to go. So the thing to, to note about passive income, it doesn't normally start out passive. Right. So there's usually some work that you need to do beforehand to get it to that point. So it's, it, it's important to think about where you're trying to get something to. So if it, if it is that you're running a business, maybe the goal is for one day you to start multiple businesses, but you have to build up that business first. And then maybe with the right systems, with the right people, then you can have another you know, branch or location or something. Right. But at the point it becomes passive is when you no longer have to do anything to get that money back from it. to get that money. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, Errol, what are some of the key opportunities for income generation that's easy to get off the ground? Emphasis on easy. All right. I'm going to have to go with, you said easy. So first, I would start with things like, you know, flipping things, I would say. And, I, you know, that's why I think NFTs, again, not to go back to that subject, but I think that's why it was so popular. It's a form of kind of flipping um, and if you're somebody young and you, and you want an easy way to start building an extra, even if it's a hundred dollars a month, you want to start putting into the market so that compound can start working in your favor. Um, you know, going on Craigslist, I see people flipping sofas, finding free items, um, flipping them that way. Because like you said, you, it's going to start off active and then it can get passive, but you have to build up that capital some way first. Um, but since you said easy, that's what I would go with. Um, find stuff that you can flip and things that have a demand. Yeah. So a, a simple thing that I see as well, sometimes persons don't realize that they are the go-to person for something. Right. So I was actually going to say, Errol said, you know, you have to build up the capital. But what people don't realize is that sometimes you are, you are the capital. You are the capital. So when I wrote my book, I, all that, guys, I sat down for a week and I just typed some stuff from my head and it became a book. I don't know what happened there, but that's what happened. And then the money, it, people started just giving me money for this thing, right? Yeah. So sometimes you are the capital. You know something so well, go monetize it. You are funny, go start a YouTube channel, a TikTok channel, something. People will, I've heard, we'll people will give you money yeah. for, for, for you making them laugh. So. Yeah. So, so the point is there, what Anna just said, I mean, 
a lot of times we don't know that our experience is worth something. Right. right. Errol said he, he, he started sharing his personal experience on YouTube, and then he branched off to TikTok. The, the thing is there is that sometimes we want to figure it all out before we start. Right. It's best to just start. It's Unless the book start. is finished, the book can't be sold. Precisely. Yeah. Just start. And you know what you find? You start, you get so into it, you get so absorbed yeah. that you're like, why didn't I want to start again? It's just yeah. not clicking. Yeah. All right. So I just have to add real quick. I'm so sorry, but just on that no, note, I saw, ahead, please. I saw a quote today. It said, motivation gets you started. Discipline um, finishes the job. But well, I just one really well. liked that. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. All right, guys, so what is one piece of advice that you would give to your younger self? I know you're both young, but imagine younger. What's one piece of advice you'd give to your younger self in regards to building wealth? First of all, I don't feel young. Like, I don't feel young at all. This COVID thing, it, it add 10 years to me right now. But basically, what I wish I knew earlier was, first of all, for every single dollar that you earn or get, Put, that, put some of that away into investments. Um, you are never too young to start learning about investments. You're never too young to start learning about personal finance. I would start, listen, when I was in high school, I was busy listening to, what the people are named? TLC on all those people. I wish I knew about all of this because I would use that time to learn about this instead. Yeah. So I could just hit the, hit the ground running. That's what I would want to tell my younger self. Okay, okay. Errol, what would you say to your younger self? Um, something I would say to my younger self, right when you turn 18, start trying to build your credit. Immediately when you turn 18, no excuses. Um, you will thank yourself later if anybody's around that time, but that's something, you know, I'm not that, I'm not that old yet, so I don't have much, when I was younger, do this yet, but more down the line, I'll have more, but. I would say build your credit right away and um, just just take risks. Take risks, don't be shy, be curious, and don't just research, take advantage of YouTube. That has got me pretty far. So the technology we have, don't take it for granted. Yeah, it, it's, it's so amazing that we have so much access to information now than we did 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So it's really, for there is free. no excuse. Exactly, for, for free. free. <laughs> there is no excuse as to why you can't get started. I mean, if I would say, I, I think I'm old enough to give advice to my younger self. <laughs> so I would just say, I mean, think long term. That was right. the thing that I never, I, I, when I was in my 20s, I just focused on tomorrow mm -hmm. or next week. Or next month, I wasn't really thinking about building wealth. I wasn't interested. I, I thought it was impossible, right. based on where I started. Mm -hmm. But now, I mean, in the last five years as I've been investing, it's so it's it's extreme. It's so possible for me, and it's it's right within my grasp to get to my goals. Right. That I, I don't necessarily wish that I started sooner. Mm -hmm. I just wish that I started as soon as I heard about it. Okay. So, for example, if there's anybody right now watching who has not started to invest, today is the day to start. Right. 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 So, it's, it, I mean, we can't do anything about the past, but we can start right now. Can I just add one more point? Yeah. Um, uh, something else I'd want to tell my younger self. <laughs> don't watch, don't try to keep up with the Joneses. Don't watch anybody else. You're running your own race, yeah. right? You have your own challenges. You have your own difficulties. Don't get down on yourself. Don't get depressed when you are not here or you are not there because Bob is there and Mary's there. Just make sure you focus on yourself. Lock down on your goals. Ascertain what your goals are, as in you alone, not you and yeah. your mother or your father. Sit down and figure out what your goals are. Work out your sub-goals. Work out your action items. And then you start working. Don't watch anybody else. And sometimes you're more, you're farther along than you realize. Right, exactly. Yeah. I was actually saying that to Instagram <laughs> the other day that yeah. last year uh, for 2022, that was 2022, <laughs> 2021, <laughs> COVID, I'm sorry, 2021, I started 2021 with a set of goals. And because I was so 
locked on to each goal. Yeah. I was so focused on each goal. I never realized that maybe halfway through the year, I achieved what I set out to achieve. But because I was so hard on myself, yeah. I was so... I was trying to, I was looking at other people in my field, other people in my space, saying, oh, but they've gotten here, they've gotten there. I discarded my goals. I never realized that I hit my own targets. Yeah. So I think that one of the sure ways to, to, to go far is just to be consistent, be because consistent. that's what people like the most. Be consistent. For yeah. those of us who are trying to get a good body, all you need to do is be consistent, right? <laughs> All right, so Once let's... You progress, you don't want to stop, no matter what right. it is. Right. Yeah, you see progress. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. All right, so we're going to close out by asking you both to share one personal money habit that you'd recommend. So, Errol, I'm, I'm going to start with you. What's one personal money habit that you would recommend? One personal money habit, <clears throat> again, it is to invest... <clears throat> excuse me. It's to invest more than you save. But one thing I will say too, because on the other side of the spectrum, people can be pretty frugal. So I will say, like, enjoy life too sometimes. Like, you've came pretty far. Uh, enjoy the fruits of your labor, but be smart about it um, and, and make sure you're okay. Invest more than you save, though. Yeah. Anna? This is, the people are going to hate me for this one, but <laughs> <laughs> in my book, I have um, keep your bills, your needs. A uh, fifty percent of your income, but you know what? I'm going to challenge you to do even less than that. A good personal f finance habit that I think you could it, it could benefit from is to try to keep your needs maybe forty percent, thirty percent, twenty percent, ten percent. Sometimes I think persons <laughs> confuse needs with wants, and I don't understand what they're why you're confusing it. You're confusing it because. <laughs> You are confusing you because you love your own way. That is what is happening. You know what is a need. You know that if you don't pay your rent or your mortgage, you're going to get kicked out. You know that you need food. You know you need, you don't need clothes all the time. I need to tell myself that most times, but you know what they are. You just need to have discipline yeah. where that's concerned. Yeah. I think it's that instant gratification, which can be difficult for today's day and age, just instant gratification all, all the time. And that, that can be hard to overcome. <laughs> I, but so, it comes back to the mindset. No, but so, yeah. so here's yeah. the thing, that, that instant gratification, I think, has been kind of ingrained in us mm -hmm. from what we see. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I like to say we need to, to curate what we are feeding ourselves. Right, So exactly. if we're seeing the right things, then we'll actually desire less and less of the things that will harm us. And, you know, just building on that point, something that, again, you guys are going to hate me, but you need to look to your circle of friends and the people you surround yourself with. Because, believe it or not, the information and the, the kind of environment that you immerse yourself in, it's going, to, it's going to end up influencing you at some point. You may not even realize that you're being influenced, but you are. If you surround yourself with people who are positive, people who are in, headed in the same direction that you are, are headed, they've achieved what you are trying to achieve, it becomes that much easier for you to do it. But if you're trying to build out an empire, Jermaine, and your friends, all them want to do every Friday, every Saturday, every Sunday is go brav and party and all these things. You know that you're yeah. going to give in at some point. It's going to be a little bit yeah, difficult I mean, for you. The, the things that we feed ourselves shapes our thoughts. Whatever shapes our thoughts shapes our actions. We right. do what we believe. Precisely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, I think we have a second poll question. Can we have that um, on screen? All right, guys, so let's, let's have your feedback on this one. This one looks like an easy one for you. What is passive income? We spoke about that earlier. All right, and I think we have some questions from the audience as well. If you have them, please just post them in the chat, and, we, <laughs> and we'll say them. OK, so the very first question I see is, where can we get the big bad book of everything? Oh, I got you. All right, so you can go on anapalomino.com. You can purchase there, or you can go to any Brown's bookstore location. It's stocked there, too. All right, perfect. All right. Errol, this one is for you. What are options? 
options are like insurance for stock. Um, they're, they can be used as insurance. There's many ways you can use options. Uh, you can use them to be very aggressive. You can use them to be uh, very conservative. One of the main differences with options and stocks is options are a contract and shares of a stock are not. Um, and, and options have an expiration date. So they expire and they will eventually be worthless. But the difference with stock is stock will only be worthless if it goes to zero and they have no expiration date. So that's one of the um, ways I can kind of explain options. Uh, it can get pretty confusing, but again, YouTube is your best friend um, and definitely a lot of benefits to learning it, so. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right, this question says, how do you generate income on a consistent basis and be able to invest and build wealth? Anna, you want to say that one? Sure, are you ready for a story? It's sure. a story. <laughs> so what I'd like to tell you guys, uh, follow your passion and do some introspection to figure out what your talents are. My story is this. I went, through, I went to law school, I did the whole thing, studied for the bar, passed the bar, all of that, worked in a firm because I thought that's, you know, you know how Jamaicans are. This is, either you're gonna be a lawyer, doctor, Indian, or chief. So, and that's how you're gonna make the money, right? So that's what I did, and guess what? I realized less than a year in that this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. You know what happened? I ended up in a place, in a field that was literally something that made me so happy, money. I never knew much about you know, options or mutual funds and all of that, but you know what I've always loved? Money, making money, building out wealth. So to answer your question, how I do it is, how I do it now is I monet I've monetized my talents, I've monetized my skills, I've monetized my, my passion. So I do that in different formats, through my books, through my coaching, through my engagements, and my best advice to you is try, try to, to, to start there or figure out what you are good at, try to monetize it. Don't discount your talents. Yeah. You have people out there who are, their talent is to install wigs. And it sounds so like my talent is in Saul Wig. You sit down on that because that could never be a talent. You sit down on it and you don't realize that you have people out there who have half your talent installing wigs, making millions of dollars per month. Do not discount your talent. Yeah, so I mean, I, I, I can't agree more. Pursue your passion, our, our passions are a guide to the things that would give us fulfillment. So if it is something that keeps stirring up in you, you think about it all the time, it's really about finding the right environment, the right community to help you foster that passion. Right, and yeah. because it's your passion, because it's something that you like doing, it doesn't feel like work. Because for me, right now, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like work at all. It just feels like vibes, <laughs> you know? So just imagine doing something like this, guys, um, on a daily basis. Yeah and you're getting paid for it. Imagine that, right? Do what you love, you don't work a day in your life. That's what you're saying it sounds like. Yep, precisely so. <laughs> I hope you've been posting on social media your takeaways. Remember on Twitter, the tweet that gets the most retweets. And for Instagram and Facebook, stay tuned. There are some, some information coming out about how you can participate in those giveaways. So make sure you're getting involved. Be sure you made your notes of everything that stood out for you. We're going to be having sessions on, on stock market investing for tomorrow and investing in cryptocurrency and international stocks on day three. So everything that you need to learn about getting started in investing is going to be covered this weekend. So stay locked in, stay engaged. Be sure to take notes. <laughs> and just, you know, lean into it, all right? <laughs> ah, nice, I see, I, I, I see Carla has taken her notes, excellent. Guys, thank you, thank you very, very much. I mean, man, I, I, I'm glad that folks had their notebooks and were taking notes because it's like so many rich, rich nuggets. It's been wonderful, first of all. Um, we're very, very happy that we've kicked off Elevate 4.0 2022 in fine style. 
awesome discussion talking about everything from what you really need to do to start building wealth. We spoke about passive income. We spoke about even just how you spend your money, being frugal. I love the point that um, Errol made that sometimes, yeah, you do need to enjoy life a little bit as well because you still need to make it fun. But it, it's really great to just have all of these nuggets to kick off what's going to be a wonderful weekend of learning. I love to see our folks online who had on their cameras. And yes, don't worry if you never have on your camera, no problem. We know you in your bunny slip and you're comfortable, but that's fine. We're happy that you've joined us, and we're just very happy that you guys have really done so much to prepare and to come and to bring this conversation. So on behalf of the JMMB family, I have to big up first of all our moderator for today's session, Jermaine. Jermaine and I connected, what, through LinkedIn, I think? Yeah, Jermaine reached out to me on LinkedIn. If you're not on LinkedIn, you need to be on LinkedIn. Um, and we've been having great conversations and so happy that now we get the opportunity to partner together in this way. And we hope that it will be the first of more opportunities to come and big up you and your community and all that you are doing to empower Jamaicans of any age to learn more about how they can grow wealth for themselves and for their families. And Anna, it's so great to meet you in person. I see you on IG all the time. I mean, pictures and video don't really do justice all the time because she looks even more gorgeous in person. And I, as I said, I mean, she's looking fabulous, right? And all of us in our JBV shirts, and she's just looking fabulous. But Anna, thank you for all you do. Because I personally see it as, obviously, I'm sure it's an income-generating opportunity for you, but the fact that you've chosen this for your, as your passion and that you're really pouring into other people as well in a very similar way to what Jermaine is doing in his community is just wonderful. And thank you as well for partnering with JMMB. And Errol, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's Errol, but, you know, we're broadcasting from Jamaica, so you know how we're going to pronounce it, right? It's Errol. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I'm sure your family call you Errol. <laughs> yeah, so, man. yes. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I know you know the thing. So, Errol joining us all the way from the United States. Did you say where Errol was joining us from? Errol, can you say where you're joining us from? Yeah, I'm down here in Tampa, Florida right now. All right, so you're not far from us at all. I mean, not far at all. Yeah, yeah, Florida, we kind of roll it up into Kingston 21. Yeah. That's what we call it. Every second person in Florida is a Jamaican or of Jamaican roots. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much, Errol. I mean, again, it's probably not every day that a financial institution from Jamaica just sends you a DM or an email and says, hey, we want you to come and talk at our event. And uh, he graciously accepted and, of course, has been a part of the planning process and preparation and has joined us here this evening on what could have been otherwise just a regular Friday, um, but has joined us as well. And we think the perspectives of having local and international perspectives, especially North American, which I guess is our closest neighbor is important because um, a lot of what they're doing we are seeing and sometimes we want to emulate and take advantage of that. So we believe the balance of local and international knowledge is important. So thanks again, Errol, <laughs> for being a part of JMMB Elevate 4.0. All right, so we're just going to do some wrapping up, some great housekeeping items. So first of all, of course, we cannot end tonight because I'm going to go back to what were the prizes and surprises because, yes, I want to see how Twitter been getting on. If you're not tweeting, we need to see the tweeting because there's still time to tweet and stuff, but we're going to get into that into a bit. But, of course, we, want, we cannot wrap up tonight without acknowledging again our fabulous sponsors without whom Elevate 4.0 could not be possible. So that's Express Fitness. Thank you very much, Domino's Pizza. Yum, yum. And we have um, water and cran water as other great sponsors as well. Live Simple and Bresche. Thank you so much to our sponsors again, without whom we could not put on this event. Thank you very much. Now, JMMB is happy again, as always, to pepper throughout Elevate some wonderful prizes and surprises. So this evening, 
we are giving away three JMMB gift certificates, right? That means, you know, JMMB, we don't do water, we don't do food, we do money, right? So those gift certificates are denominated in money <laughs> that you're going to use to open a JMMB account. So that can either get you started in building your wealth or it can enhance what you're already doing. And so to do that, you need to be, first of all, following us on social media, JMMB. We are on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. On Twitter, we are at JMMB Group, J-A. On Instagram, we are JMMB Group. And on Facebook, we are JMMB Group Jamaica. All right? So first of all, you have to be following us on those platforms. Now, this is how you can end up our chance to win. So on Twitter, my Twitter people always active for all the nuggets that we would have been sharing tonight. Keep tweeting. If you haven't started tweeting already, tweet them out there. Put them out there in the world. Tweet all of the nuggets that you would have gotten. And of course, tag JMMB Group JA. This is on Twitter. And include in the tweet the hashtags, hashtag JMMB, hashtag JMMB Elevate, and hashtag JMMB Goal Getter, yeah, man. Put out your tweets, and of course, the three people whose tweets have the highest number of retweets, you're going to win, the, what each of you is going to win a JMMB gift certificate to open a JMMB account. So get to tweeting, put it out there, call your family and your friends and tell them to hit that retweet button because we want you to be in good stead to get a chance to win one of those three gift certs. Now, on the Instagram and Facebook family, all you need to do is just go to JMB Jamaica's account on Instagram and Facebook, respectively, because we post the activities there. So just go there, look in our timeline. We should have put the posts up by, posts up by now, I'm sure. So look at the posts and do the activities there, and you will see how you can enter for a chance to win prizes over there. So there is lots of giveaways happening, folks. Don't be left out. That's part of the fun. And um, yes, looking forward to seeing you all online on social media. Now, guys, this is day one. We're only getting started. Again, the way we've done Elevate is we just kind of spread out the session so you can still do live. So tomorrow is Saturday. We know everybody have them Saturday business to do, right? Supermarket and them things. You can still do all of that. And join us here. We are back here tomorrow evening. 5.30 p.m. is when we kick off with more fun again uh, with our friends, Copper Shot. And Julie, I think, is coming back. No, yes, I got the thumbs up. Julie is coming back. So more fun tomorrow, 5.30. Get your watch party together. It's COVID time still. So get your watch party together in the safety of your home. And have everybody log on because we are really excited about tomorrow's sessions. Because, again, you know, we build the topics around what you guys want. So tomorrow is going to be hot. Tomorrow we're going to be talking about stocks. All right? That's the first session. And we know everybody loves stocks, right, Jeremy? All the Twitter people, the finance Twitter people love the stocks conversation. And we're going to be having some fantastic speakers. You know who they are. Can I just even reiterate? I don't even want to call name and miss name and get myself in trouble. But check out the agenda online, right? Give you also whole work to do. We're going to be talking about stocks. And in the second session which was another big area of concern, is when you look at the Jamaican economy and what's expected to happen in 2022, there are a lot of people who are concerned. And they're like, hey, um, interest rates going up, what that going mean, inflation, I got liquid, lots of concerns. And we know that a lot of people want to know, boy, how do I navigate this economy and how do I keep on the path to investing and saving towards my goal. It's a big concern. And so we'll be talking about how you can continue to grow your wealth and build wealth and invest and save in a high interest rate environment, given what's happening in the economy. So a very important discussion. We have some economists coming in, some notable people who know them things. But don't worry. We're not speaking Spanish. We're going to be speaking it in English. We're going to be breaking it all the way down for you guys so that you have everything you need to kickstart 2022. You see, freeness, you know, this is free, but it's, ex it's extremely valuable. So please get back here tomorrow evening where we're going to be covering those two sessions for day 
two. And again, anybody else who you know who would have registered, tell them to join us as well. So thanks again, guys. Wonderful way to kick off day one, JMMB Elevate 4.0. Thank you for joining us. Please stay safe. And God's willing, we will see you back here tomorrow, 5.30 p.m., same place online. Thank you very much. Have a great night.